All right, welcome everybody into the week. Was it week four now? Week four week preview four. for the Real Talk Ravens podcast, where we preview the Cleveland Browns game, Ravens, Baltimore Ravens at Cleveland Browns on October first. We're in October football now. So, what do you got to say, Mike? Uh boy. Um, well, first, I'd like to say thank you for holding down the fort without me for the last episode. Um, and really fast, I just want to say I feel like we should have won that last game, but I'm not very, I'm, I'm not panicking since we did. Um, also, for anyone who says Justin Tucker's washed up, I would have to say that he missed a 63 yarder by a foot. 61. It was, foot it was 61. He was a foot short. <laughs> and if he had those same field goal attempts as the Colts dude, he would have nailed all of them. And every Ravens fan knows that. So let's let's know. let's not. What did he do? Like in, what did he do in week two? Had one field goal attempt from sixty-three yards because our offense was too inept to get it any further down the field. <clears throat> but I think that that was just a game where we have a lot of game tape coming uh, that we can learn from. Now coming into the Browns game. I feel like we just had the two worst matchups back to back. The Browns match up really well against the Ravens because their defensive line is among the best in the NFL. I think their defense actually is the best in the NFL right now. Um, and our offense can't do anything without, um, unless Lamar Jackson can stay out of pressure. And right now he's getting a lot of pressure. We need to play a lot more like we did in the game against the Bengals than we did last week. Um, because the Browns could potentially up like blow us out if we don't if we don't show up. Oh, yeah. So this week, obviously, we're in Cleveland, so we have got our away jerseys. We're going white jerseys, black pants. Our uh, weather's looking pretty good. Sixty-eight degrees and sunny. No rain this week, which will be nice. No rain. Um, not that was anything notable. Uh, spread for the game right now, Cleveland's favored by three, over-unders 40 and a half. This week, our referee is Brad Allen. Um, he's pretty much on league average with his penalties, so nothing notable there. Which one is Brad Allen? Um, I can pull a picture up. Because once I see his face, I'll know if he's a good ref or not. Huh. Apparently, there's a lot of Brad Allens. Is it that dude who sounds like he's like a. So this right here, let me get. <clears throat> oh, God. This that is dude. The... It's who I thought it was, too. Uh, God. <laughs> he's probably among the worst refs in the NFL. Well, so far, he is not um, throwing too many flags this year. So hopefully he continues with that. Yeah, well, the but, last game we lost because a flag wasn't thrown. So, yeah, that is true. That is true. Hopefully, if he does throw flags, it's on the other team. How about that? Right. How um, penalized is Cleveland this year? Can't um, be as bad as last. I, I didn't see anything, honestly, notably with them with that. So, um, yeah. Um, they're yeah. looking to go two and one in the division. We're looking now, to let go me go two ahead. Out. Let me go ahead and pull up the injury report for the week right now. So just looking at this right now, we've got some really good news, some unexpected news with having Marcus Williams back in full, not limited, full practice as of today, yep. Thursday. That makes you think maybe the injury wasn't as serious as initially believed. Either that or he's just toughing it with his way through it. Um, yeah, but I don't way. think we would just let him – come back that fast, even if he was just toughing it, you know? Yeah. I mean, I know that we probably are expecting this to be a, a tough game, so maybe that's why. But um, Gus Edwards is back full, so we don't have to worry about that. And then limited, we've got Kyle Hamilton. I think he's got he, – he has a back injury. Justice Hill's limited with his foot. Uh, Linderbaum and Stanley both limited, limited with their ankle and knee still. Um, Marlon Humphrey is still not practicing. Still no Marlon Humphrey. Might as well have just been put on injured reserve. Still no Ojabo or Owe. Still no uh, OBJ. And then 
Bateman has not practiced at all this week after injuring his hamstring in the game. So that's not good for the receiver position or the outside linebacker position. But thankfully, we did make some moves. We signed we Kyle signed. Van Noy to the practice squad. More than likely, he will be on the active roster come Sunday. We um, also already... signed Dante Demas to the practice squad. Yes, we, we did sign wide receivers Dante Demas and wide receiver Tariq Black to the practice squad. And in turn, we released fullback Ben Mason and guard Kyle Fuller that we had I recently think both signed. I those guys will probably find their way back on this team at some point. It seems like Ben Mason – Always does. So I, yeah. I can see that for him. Kyle Fuller, he's only been here for like a week. So I don't know about him. But well, either maybe. way, um, yeah. I definitely expect to see Kyle Van Noy suit up Sunday. And I think he's going to be a large part of the game plan this week. I've already seen reports of Michael Mike McDonald saying he has an ex, like extreme just football IQ and how you definitely can see him being used on third downs. So that's Five sacks for the Chargers last year. Yep, five sacks for the Chargers. Um, I'm, I'm excited. excited. I made the playoff. I'm excited. Um, <clears throat> that wasn't just some random Chargers team, too. They made the playoffs. Yeah, for Their sure. Their defense was pretty legit for most of the year. They let up some big scoring games, but for the most part, they were pretty legit. I'm hoping that by tomorrow, Friday, we do see Ronnie Stanley and Linderbaum, as well as Kyle Hamilton and Justice Hill practice in full. That would be nice to see, but until then, these guys are still going to be questionable for this Sunday. Um, I don't know. Hopefully, you at know, least half of them are available on Sunday. That's my. I would hope. rather I would rather Stanley Stanley back than uh, than uh, Linderbaum because Mustafer has been playing really well so far. I mean, yeah, he had that boss snap, but other than that, he's been blocking great. You know. And we could give him more of the rest. I do feel like we have a hole at left tackle. Not anything against Mercari, just sometimes it's an overwhelming presence, especially when you've got um, Miles Garrett and Zadarius Smith on the outside this weekend. You know, you yeah, this week have especially. This this week especially, you're going to want Ronnie Stanley back in the lineup. Um, but yeah, looking at the Browns injury report. I mean, they're pretty much completely healthy. I mean, the biggest yeah, concern, no the biggest concern that they have is Deshaun Watson's shoulder being limited with soreness. I did see that he did just, he's only been doing light throwing so far this week. So I feel like that's good news. I think that tells you, like, I don't know, as a former quarterback for me, I feel like, you know, during the week, being able to throw the, you know, speci specifically in the, in the certain situational, uh, practice scripts that you do. It's really good to get your timing down with that. And so hopefully that, um, you know, makes it so that, you know, third down situations, red zone situations, those types of things, Deshaun Watson's not 100% on point this weekend. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I feel like he's fine. I feel like he's okay. He's just... I mean, I guess being... we don't have anyone really watching the whole practice. I'm guessing that they only allow the reporters in for the beginning parts anyways, but... right. So, well, I mean, you could, I mean, you're probably right to an extent. I think, though, at the same time, Deshaun Watson's completely fine. He just tweaked something and he's just taking it easy, you know? Um, oh, yeah. I don't think it's a serious also, injury. Like, all they need to do to beat us is run the ball down our throats. We proved last week we can't stop the run. So, yeah. Unless sure. that was a one off thing, they can just run the ball down our throats and win the game like pretty pretty easily I, yeah before. we'll talk about that with our defense all right and now we are going to go ahead and get into the tk's coaches film room study here with the tk's coaches film room segment just going to review a little bit of the last game versus the indianapolis colts um not a lot of good stuff, honestly, just from looking at the film, especially offensively. Um, this was definitely our best play offensively, so I wanted to go ahead and get started with that. This was Lamar's first touchdown run that he scored on. Um, but the thing that I really liked about it was the actual play design itself. So what you can see is you're going to have both of the tackles arcing out on either side to block someone. 
And then what they're actually Lamar's going to do is he's going to read this defensive tackle right here. And then this guard is going to free release. Simpson's going to free release up to this backer. The center and the right guard are going to outside zone block to the right for the for this defensive tackle and eventually try to double team that combo that block up to the second level. And then you're going to get a down block by your tight end. Also, obviously, this is prior. Isaiah likely is going to motion across here to a three by one, and he's also going to try to block this end. And yeah, I just really like this because I like to see both of our tackles out in space blocking uh, defensive backs. I think we've done a good job this year of doing that, especially Morgan Moses. He's really manhandled a lot of DBs, and it's pretty fun to see that. So let's go ahead and watch it. Motion across. Again, right here, he's going to read this defensive tackle. All right, so he's saying he is going upfield. He's going to take the running back, so Lamar is going to keep it. He's got Morgan Moses out in the perimeter blocking. He does a good job setting up his block for Mustafa on this DB, and Morgan Moses takes his guy down, and Lamar makes guy miss. Touchdown. Great play. And that's where pretty much my positive film review comes back from this week offensively. Um, next play, I mean, I did like this play. We, uh, we actually had a really good gain out of it. But as you all know, the end result is not what we wanted. So what we have here is uh, it was set up by a previous play where Mark Andrews ran a basically a seam ball. And then you had the angle route behind with the running back. We hit Mark Andrews the first time. and uh, But it's just going to set this up nicely. And we're going to have basically this right guard's going to release for a screen. And your running back is going to do his angle route. Lamar is now basically going to read or try to move this linebacker over to this uh, to his left because he's going to have an Aguilar here on the little hitch route. So he's going to try to look him off. And then that creates even more space for the angle route to Drake. So he looks him off to his left. Eyes are to the left. Gets that linebacker to move just enough. We've got the free release here with the guard right here. And... Boom, wide open. Great play, a lot of space, a lot of room for the running back to run with the ball. So he catches the ball at the 45, gets all the way down to the 20. Unfortunately, we all know Drake fumbles this, we lose the ball, and that was just the beginning of the end for the offense. But it was a really good play, and it was a really good play design, and we just have to hold on to the ball and be better with our ball security. All right, so here we have basically an RPO read with the quarterback draw out of empty. And we have a stick concept to our right with the three receivers. Okay, so what he's going to do is he's going to read the Mike linebacker. Lamar's going to read this linebacker right here. If he goes out of the box, we have a light five-man box and a good uh, quarterback draw run, basically. Um if he stays inside the box, you can basically have two defenders out here over three receivers. So one of those receivers should be open. All right. So what we see right here on the snap, the linebacker stays on Mark Andrews out of the box. Our center is going to free release up to this weak side linebacker for the draw. And Lamar just is late. He's late. It's This should be an easy, quick decision. Look at all this run lane right here, all this room, all this space. You know Lamar. First off, you got a lead blocker out here on the linebacker. The only other unblocked defender is 20 yards deep, the safety. And I think Lamar can take that guy one-on-one. -on -one. This might be a house call if he actually takes off and uh, just reads it quicker. And this is also... Look at this, third down. I guarantee you he gets five yards at least. 
So we get the first down here instead. Lamar takes a sack, almost loses the ball. It falls, the ball falls out, and that's just one of the many misreads for Lamar on the day. All right, next we have um, just another example of Lamar reading the wrong side. Um, this is basically a kind of a weak side flood concept. Um, you're going to have this outside receiver is running a fade, speed out, you got the crosser, and then some version of that on the back side. You should be looking right now at your open space. If we rewind this, we can see there is a blitzer coming off the edge right now. Lamar has to see this guy coming. All right, that's your hot read. You, you basically have a running back on him, but there's one defender out here. This is not cover two, so he does not have the flats. So you should have a nice, easy speed out to Nelson Aguilar right now. Nelson Aguilar should catch the ball right now, and, I mean, he should be up the sideline. Should be a good play. Instead, Lamar rolls out. Nothing. He rolls out to the opposite side the receivers are going to. And he does not outrun the defensive end and has to throw the ball away. So now we're down to uh, third down. Could be a easy you know, third and short or first down, most likely. Next, we have... All right, so this one, I just wanted to point out um, Rashad Bateman. You might have seen this already. A couple of people I've seen have posted it. He's basically got a double move with a slant and go, otherwise known as a sluggo, and he absolutely kills this DB. Um, if I'm Lamar right now, I'm looking at this safety right here. If this safety stays where he's at or moves to the left at all, which you can still do with your eyes, with Lamar's eyes, he can look him off to the left. I'm looking at this one-on-one -on -one matchup right here on a double move all day. Um, so let's look at, see what he does. Instead, Lamar immediately looks down to the bottom here where we just have a basic snag concept, but look at Rashad Bateman up top here. Here he is planning on the double move. Woo. If we just push the ball down the field, I know it was raining, but Lamar, you got to be able to push the ball down the field. These five-yard completions are only going to push our offense down so much. We have to be nearly perfect if we just go five yards at a time. We need to have some big, big plays. Um, and it just didn't seem like Lamar really pushed the ball down the field in this game. He was just content with hitting his five-yard checkdowns. And you can see our offense struggled because of it. Okay, so here we basically have a jet power read. Uh, you're going to get Simpson here pulling up for the linebacker. And Lamar is going to be reading this defensive end. Zay Flowers is going to be coming in motion across. You get a lead blocker with the running back. And basically, if this defensive end uh, is out leveraged in any way whatsoever by Z Zay Flowers, or we think he can outrun him, Lamar should just hand the ball off. Right, We shouldn't have to take an unnecessary hit going up the middle. We should try to get this ball out on the edge as much as possible. Um, but what we see, we get the jet sweep action. He jumps inside. The defensive end jumps inside just one step, and that's all Lamar should need to know, I need to hand this ball off to Zay. Zay is going to be gone around the edge with Melvin Gordon lead blocking for him and probably off to the races. Definitely a huge play that was missed. Um, instead, defensive end comes back, crashes down, and disrupts the play because he's unblocked. He's a guy that we are supposed to be reading. Okay, this is the last offensive play I wanted to watch. This was later on in the game. Um, we basically have another version of our snag concept down to the bottom here. But up top, we have two slants. Double slant here. You're going to have, I think, corner, some type of like snag route right here. And 
swing. All right, this is situation third and three. Okay, so what you should be reading, Lamar, he should be reading this linebacker right here, the weak or the will linebacker, the weak inside linebacker. If he pushes to the field or to the boundary whatsoever, I'm thinking hit my short slants right now, one-on-one. -on -one, I should be able to get one of those guys on a slant, especially with this safety being as high as he is. Okay, so right now he's already plus over the ball pretty much. So I'm thinking right now I can take a quick peek to my boundary where there's four defenders for three receivers, look him off to create space for my slant, and then quick fire in that slant. If Zay Flowers isn't open, then the outside receiver I think is Aguilar should be open. All right. Instead, Lamar's got to fit it in down here. He reads the boundary. He looks off the opposite way. He reads the boundary. Look, this linebacker is right here. One, two, three, four defenders. One, two, three receivers. So we're already at a disadvantage. Lamar's looking at the wrong side of the field. Okay, so instead of doing what he should be doing, throwing the easy slant to Zay Flowers right here, get the first down, possibly make a guy miss and go for more, he forces it in between two defenders, a very catchable pass, but not an easy one. I think the one to Zay Flowers is definitely a much easier pass. There's definitely no excuse for likely to drop this pass, but definitely I think either either Zay Flowers or Aguilar up top on the slants is a much easier throw and catch and more likely a first down. Okay, let's go ahead and switch to the defensive side of things. Um, all in all, defense played a really well, really good game. Um, we did let up a few runs, but for the majority, I thought we did a pretty good job of containing that. Um, however, Basically, all I wanted to show with the defense this week is a Kyle Hamilton highlight because he deserves every bit of um, the credit for this week. He was all over the place, all over the field, and definitely caused the Colts offense a lot of fits. So I just wanted to show a few plays highlighting him blitzing, coming off the edge, and how he just disrupted so many different things. All right, so right now, Hamilton right here in the nickel position. Um, definitely played a lot more of that this week. And he's coming off the edge hot. Nobody's taking him. But keep in mind, Clowney is taking this tackle so that nobody can slide out to Hamilton. He is being the decoy, basically. And Hamilton is scot-free. And he's not missing that tackle. So great job by Clowney. Great job by Kyle Hamilton for not letting the quarterback get away. Now we have our uh, Clownies back here to the boundary. And now we bumped out Roquan Smith off to the edge. And then outside of him, Hamilton is out here in the slot nickel position. And again, now the decoy, instead of it being Clowney, is Roquan. Roquan's going to take this tackle and then actually dips underneath even more to keep his eyes away from Kyle Hamilton. Kyle Hamilton comes off the edge scot free again. Boom. I mean, he's just covering ground so quickly. It's impossible for any running back to even see him if they're looking across trying to scan in pass pro. All right, here we go again. Now you got uh, Hamilton coming off this left nickel edge, and it's a handoff to Zach Moss, and he comes off the edge. Pretty much wraps up the running back right here in the backfield. He doesn't get credit for the full tackle, but definitely a half half tackle there. And basically becomes a tackle for loss or right at the line of scrimmage. Huge. Okay. And then here he is again coming off the edge. Clowney being the decoy. I mean, they're an empty, so they don't really have a chance. And then this is the fumble that he causes. And then this is just the how the ball rolled for the Ravens the entire game. I mean, if you looked at this picture, it looks like he's going to scoop and score. Instead, gets taken out by the offensive lineman. Ball goes to the sideline. 21's got a chance at it. Stevens, he doesn't get it. And then Colts get it. And that was the game. All right, welcome back from TK's Coach's Film Room Study. I hope you enjoyed uh, my takes on this week. Um, 
I just big emphasis, that. big emphasis on Kyle Hamilton defensively. Big yeah. emphasis on Lamar's misreads offensively. More on Kyle Hamilton later, by the way. I, I love the kid. I'm, hmm. But uh, let's go ahead and move into our offense then. Um, like you said, they are probably maybe the number one defense in the NFL right now. However, they have only played Tennessee, Pittsburgh, and Cincinnati who have struggled offensively so far. So I wouldn't consider – it's hard to say that they're the number one defense when they haven't faced a true – offense yet um their defense coordinator jim schwartz been a lot been around a long time um he's been really good as a dc for a long time um they're the number one third down defense and we're the number two third down offense so something's got to give um I would, yeah. you know <laughs> miles garrett went off last week he had three and a half sacks in one game versus tennessee he's got four and a half he's total in the season kind of a joke, but He's going to move around. He's got, he's not just in a one position. He's going to move around and play outside, inside. Who knows where he'll line up. He'll probably start on one side of the ball before the snap and end up on the other. Um, but, yeah, hopefully we get Stanley back specifically for that because we definitely – McCarry is going to be outmatched when it comes to just the pure size and speed. And, uh, you know, Linderbaum will just be an added bonus if we are able to get him in, to, in there too. Um, but I am worried about our receiver situation right now with the injuries right now, our top two are Nelson Aguilar and Zay flowers behind them. It's I'm guessing they're going to call up Laquan Treadwell if we don't get one of the others healthy. I hope OBJ is healthy because this is his former team and Duvernay is healthy, isn't he? That's right. We do have Duvernay. So that's three, but you're going to ha- want to have five. So I would Maybe say. Insert likely in there as a wide receiver if we really had to. Yeah, definitely. But wide receiver, pure wide receiver, I think yeah. we're going to have to call somebody up. And I think Treadwell would be that next man up. The best, the biggest thing that we have to do is possess the ball and we need to wear them out. We need to get creative offensively, right? Last week was, I know it was in the rain, but we were not very creative. Like we were even in week one and week two, we we were creative with our motions. We were creative with trying to get the ball down the field. Last week, it just felt like we were trying to be so safe and just complete short passes and just run the ball. And just it was just like the safest game plan that I've seen. I know that we were a little bit down with injuries, but yeah, that's just my thoughts. I think we need to really just wear them out, um, wear their pass rushers out. And you know, attack yeah. their linebackers. Their linebackers are probably their weakest point of their defense. Yeah, we're definitely not going to beat the Browns by running the ball. The way we win this game is by completing the short passes, the screen passes, chewing time off the clock, melding that with a fair blend of like attempting to run or maybe having Lamar scramble. But we really have to play like we did on the first two drives against the Colts, just really methodical. It's going to be tough because the and the old line is not going to hold up against that defensive line, and Lamar is going to be scrambling a lot. He's going to need to get the ball out really fast. So expect a fast pass game plan. Um, I don't know. Maybe you get some of those like outside runs, like hit uh, pitches or like counters or something like that, like a hitch, or not a hitch. I'm sorry, a pitch. Yeah, sorry. And um, that's how we do that. But we cannot turn the ball over. Lamar Jackson, dude, what? I don't like to say this, but if you get paid the money Lamar Jackson gets paid, you shouldn't be, like, f***ing up the day one basic things, like, hold on to the football. You what? It, to me, even last last week. It's so bad this season. It, it's been almost a, a, day, a weekly thing with him, with fumbling yeah. the balls. But this past week, to me, was his worst game, just in general, just reading <laughs> – the defense pre-snap post-snap it didn't matter it was just like he was predetermining in his head who he was going to and that was it and he probably just overlooked the defense i maybe maybe he did but you know the colts colts are pretty good colts defensive line colts well, i defensive told you it was going to be a tough game yeah we i yeah i didn't like the matchup in the rain i did not but either way lamar if he, lamar just did if he just made and went through the right reads, I think we would have won that game. But needless to say, he didn't. 
Yeah, I mean, we, we it took so much unlucky stuff to happen for the Colts to finally beat us. Yeah, the luck definitely we, we went were, their way. We lost that game. The Nine Colts out of ten times game. we win that game. Yeah. Nine out of we ten. We lost that game. But, but you know what? Every every year, the Ravens seem to have one or two early kind of cringeworthy bad losses. Let's get it out of the way. Like I said earlier, it's a game where we can get a lot of tape. Lamar can learn a lot about his game. I think the offense as a whole, I think that defensive line can learn some things. Um, I don't Offense, know. Offensively, we should be playing so much better than what we are right now, and that's the key thing. Well, I think, I think new, it's not the same team. as the SEC where you have the best team and you can just run whatever plays you run. Monk has got to get creative every single week. He can't take weeks off like he did last week, and I think that's yeah. what happened. Um, we we have too much talent on the offensive side of the ball to sit there and not score at least 20 points per game. I could say at least 30 if we're healthy. Yeah. If healthy. I'm saying with what we have right now, we should be scoring minimum 21. Minimum. Yeah. And even I'll say that against Cleveland. I don't care who we are playing. That's what we need to be able to do. It's just it's it comes to a point where everyone, all these Ravens fans, all of us have been, you know, for years praying for offensive firepower. We have it. And we're not doing anything with it. To be fair, week one we tried, week two we tried again and we succeeded. Week three we didn't really try. So for the most part, the track record's been pretty good. It's just we can't have weeks like last week. It's it can't been be a... so inconsistent, though. It's like yeah. we're either perfect or we look like dog crap. Yeah. Well, it's going to take growing pains, you know. I mean, yeah, well, you don't have much time. That's all I got to say. This is the time is now. Yeah. We are, a, what, almost a quarter of the way through the season now? There's, no, there's no more excuses. Yeah, dude, I I think I think it's a little bit of an overreaction. I think last week's game was just a bad game, and it's not just last week though. It's every week. Every week, our offense is inconsistent. We look. There's times where we have flashes of greatness, and then other times where we look like we could be the worst NFL team in the in the league. Well, what I'm saying is, I think that we found that chemistry week two, and last week was just a bad week. But it's going to come back and then consistently like be back. Like I don't think that we're going to keep flip flopping. I think we found it. We realized that what we need to do to keep it. We kind of got lazy, and now we're gonna we're gonna attempt that. We might have some challenging moments. This like, week we might not win every game. You, you can't expect the Ravens to, like, you know, just steamroll teams. Even when we're our best, we're not steamrolling teams. I'm you know? saying right now we have a top five roster in the NFL. Yeah, we, we have a top five roster in the NFL. So when we play the Indianapolis Colts, we probably have a bottom five roster in the NFL. And Colts have been feisty, though. I don't care. They have a bottom five roster. When you look at it from top to bottom, they have a bottom five roster. We got simply outcoached and we got outplayed. That's what we happened. Did. We made a lot of mistakes late, like the Zay Flowers thing. Uh, we 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 need to we need to move on with the the Browns game because we yes. could talk. All right, Browns we could keep going forever. But defensively, all right, defensively, stop obvious... the mother run. Stop the mother run. Bleep this mother. Stop the mother run. Stop the run for the price stakes just all you have to do to beat this team is stop the run and get some pressure it's going to be tough to get pressure because we're going to be mostly playing with our older guys but i still have hope that some of our younger guys will be back or at least limited um right. i'm not worried about their offense i'm not at, it, from the teams that we've played so far their offense doesn't stack up that high in my book I, I, the I think they're going to be game. about the same as the Texans. You think? Yes. Their offensive line, to me, is not... I would as, argue that the Texans' offense was better than the Colts, but we just played worse against the Colts. It's hard to play defense in the rain, but regardless, uh, yeah. I think the Colts have a better O-line than the Texans. Yeah. And I think the Browns... Or I think the Colts yeah, have the a better Texans offensive line them. than the Browns. Yeah, I don't think the, don't think don't think the Browns are that good. They have Deshaun Watson, and they have Amari yeah. Cooper. Because 
No chub we'll for them means the game, no problem. We'll they don't have an, the they don't have an every down running back right now. Jerome Ford is a one hit. Like if he gets out in space, he's dangerous. But if you but keep him contained, he's not going to sit there and break tackles and go to the distance like Chubb could. Here's That's not I'm his game. Awesome, we always have this capability of like when we want to, we can completely take out the number one receiver in a game. We do it all the time where it's like, oh, so-and-so had a really bad game against the Ravens, even when they're like injured. So I don't I don't think that like Amari Cooper will be too much of a problem. I am worried about Deshaun Watson's scramble ability. I think that they'll play the screen a lot, and I think they will try and run the ball a lot against us because it's a weakness we've proved that we have. I don't think it's really a weakness. I just think we honestly defended the run really well last week, except for maybe – like 12, six or seven plays. plays, six or seven like plays, double digit plays, dude. I don't know. Like, like, it was like what 18 for like 180 yards or something crazy like that. It I was don't like know. That's 140. But yeah, uh, Moss broke like two or three 25 yarders, and besides that, he was contained under like five yards per carry. Okay, if he took if he took three 25 yarders, that's 75. That means he's still got 65 other yards just like... 65 yards rushing in a game is pretty good. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> he's just... I don't know. I think I think, I think, think you... It's tough It's tough nowadays because you see it happen so often for me to overlook a running back no matter where they were drafted or no matter where they are on the depth chart. I think it's just any wild... And any running back is a wild card, you know? Um, one guy that I'm afraid of on their team that hasn't really... Um, I don't know. He hasn't really garnered too much attention just yet, and he hasn't produced a whole lot. But he is skilled. He is fast. Is uh the wide receiver that they got from the Jets? What's his name? Oh, Elijah Moore. Elijah Moore. Elijah Moore. When I watched their game from last week, when he has the ball in his hands, he is a different speed. He keep uh, an eye out for David and Joku as well. And Joku is always a mismatch. He's a he's a really he's a top tier tight end. Um, now I can I can see Roquan maybe playing him pretty well though. Yeah, I think so. But biggest thing, like you said, can't let Deshaun Watson get outside the pocket. And not only that, when we have him dead to right on sacks, we got to we got to wrap him up. He is known for getting out of things like kind of like Lamar. He's known for getting out of it when he should be dead to right sacked. He slips right, out. He's I very so slippery. We have to. When we get a a, hold, a hang of him, we have to hold on. We got to bring him down. Hey, listen, if we can find a way to win this week, we're in a pretty good spot, despite the loss. Yeah, it's going to be tough, though. We're definitely um, going to be a little bit outmanned because of the injuries Injury. with Owe, Ojabo, Marlon Humphrey. I was hoping he'd be back for this one. OBJ, Rashad Bateman. I mean, you name it. Those guys are important. Um, but luckily, we're getting some guys back, so we'll see. I really think the key uh, are two guys that haven't played at all, really. Marcus Williams hasn't played in three weeks, and Kyle Van Noy, who hasn't played since last year. I think those two guys are going to be the keys to this game. And then on top Marcus of that, you got play. Jadavion Clowney, who's playing his former team. You know he's going to be motivated. Um, do you think and Marcus I, Williams plays, even if he practices? Or do he you was think in full practice today. But he could just be practicing. Like, I mean, I get He's that. Playing. You think? Because mm-hmm. Geno Stone's out. What's he out with? At least I thought he was. I thought he was out with the shoulder. I thought he hurt himself, but he came back into the game. He did come back in, but I could have sworn. You know what? He's not on the injury report, so maybe he is practicing. I think he's okay, but either way, that's tremendous for Marcus Williams. Yeah, I think I think Marcus is going to play. If you're in full practice on Thursday, I think you're playing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's what uh. You got that anything might else make def- up for the fact that we won't have Marlon. You got anything else for our defense? I think seriously, just stop the run, pressure the quarterback. We have to tackle, make those open field tackles. Seriously, the Browns are really good at breaking that one tackle and taking it to the house. They're a splash play offense. They're not really good at sustaining long drives all the time. But when they do, when they get into a rhythm, it can be painful. I assume you guys remember last year that loss in Cleveland. Um, awful, awful game. 
I think we can force Deshaun Watson into a turnover or two. Um, but we'll see. You know, we gotta we gotta play injury free, mistake free football. We 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 definitely gotta force a turnover. I think this is the week for that. I don't, have we even have we gotten one? I think we got a fumble, right? And that was it against Houston. We picked off. Uh, we picked off Joe Burrow. Oh yeah, Geno Stone got the pick. That's right. Yeah. So um, yeah, we definitely need to get. I mean, against this team, we we're, we're gonna need that. Yeah. But let's go ahead and get into predictions. My bold predictions for this game. I'm gonna say. Player of the game, Jadavian Clowney, two sacks with a forced fumble. And then I think their offense, or I mean our our offense is gonna have a trick play for a big play. Maybe maybe even a touchdown. And as much as everyone wants to say we're gonna lose, I'm gonna be optimistic and I'm going with a twenty four to twenty Ravens win. So those are your bold predictions? Yes. Say them one more time for the audience. Jadavion Clowney, player of the game, two sacks with a forced fumble, and then offense is going to hit on a big trick play, potentially touchdown play. Okay. And then win 24-20 Ravens. I think we have – I have a score prediction and two bold predictions. I think we combine – or no, Okay. I think we have our best passing day yet. I think we throw for over 300 yards. Um, I think that we have two passing touchdowns to a wide receiver. doesn't have to be the same one, just two wide receivers. And I'd say that's bold because most of our touchdowns have been on the ground so far. Um, the second bold prediction is that I think we – I think we see Justin Tucker redeem himself, and I see we think we see him boot a 62-plus yarder. Yeah. Um, and my final score prediction, you know, originally I was going to say the Browns are going to win, but for some reason I have a feeling in my gut that the Ravens are going to find a way to win this game. So I'm going to say Ravens. Twenty-three Browns, nineteen. Twenty-three tonight. That's a that's a score got me right there. Well, that's one of those games you could see in the AFC North where like they get a safety or something. Oh uh, yeah. And then like get the ball late, but have to get a touchdown and don't. All right. Well, that brings us to the AFC North and prime time picks. All right. So. Let me go ahead and get this pulled up. We've got our pick standings so far from the first three weeks. Last week, we were agreed yeah, on every play. single pick, so we both went 500 and 3-3. Three and three. Um, and so far on the season, I'm still up as 11-5. and five. I'm three games up. So What's you the tiebreaker, by the way, for this? The tiebreaker? If we have the same record at the end of the season, what's if we the have the same record, it'll be come down to who has the um, better Ravens prediction record. Okay. Have you been keeping track of that? Yeah. What is that? The Ravens prediction record right now. I am two and one, and you are um, one and two. Two and one. And, I'm one and two. Yeah, because That's you. Right. I am. I only got the Texans right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All, right. All right. So, first up, AFC North. We've got Pittsburgh at Houston. Pittsburgh is favored by three. I think that while well, Houston's looked pretty decent on offense, Pittsburgh's defense is really legit, and they will have no problem. Winning by two scores. I'm going to say this is CJ Stroud's breakout game. Houston Texans win at home. That would be awesome to see. I would love that. Yep. So I'm going Houston. And you're, okay. so there, we already, we've already bucked the trend from last week. 
I've already closed it down by one game. All right. Cincinnati at Tennessee for our next AFC North matchup. Cincinnati's favored by two on the road. I think that if I was scared of the Titans' offense at all, I would pick the Titans because the Bengals are so inept on offense right now. But I think that the Titans literally have the worst offense in the NFL, and I don't think they can get yards against anyone. Um, And I think that the Bengals are going to find a way to shut out the Titans and probably win by a good 30 to 40 points. Yeah, I think this one's going to be, like you said, it's going to be a big Cincinnati win. I think Cincinnati's going to probably get their offense on track with this one. I feel like they started to in their last game. Um, now, do, against oh, the sorry. Rams. Uh, I was going to say, do keep your eye on Joe Burrow's uh, calf because the the uh, Titans do like to hit the quarterback a lot. So that'll be something to monitor, but I still think he'll be fine. Okay. It's Joe Burrow. Yeah. And then that pretty much wraps up the AFC North. So yeah. um, I'm going to add a game to our primetime lineup this week. I'm going to count the London, London? game as okay. a prime timer. Because you know, it's at a different before. time. It's it's uh, Atlanta at Jacksonville. Jacksonville's yeah. first of their back-to-back games in London. And, uh, yeah, Jacksonville's favored by three. That's such a tough game to pick. I feel like these teams are almost exactly the same, where they're just so disappointing. And I know that the Falcons are like, hey, we're two and one. They're disappointing. Uh, what Desmond Ritter looks pretty bad. Um. And yeah, don't don't even don't even give a start on the Jaguars. Like they're they're pathetic. Um, I guess if I have to choose a winner, the Jaguars, just because they're used to playing in London. Yeah, I'm going Jacksonville as well. I think I think they're going to get their offense back on track. I think Atlanta's just meh. I don't I don't really have too much belief yeah. in their offense, especially with Ritter. Not um, yet. Not yeah. this year. No, I think they're they're a quarterback away. Yeah, and they're gonna have their choice of one next year. They should have Lamar Jackson. Oh, can you imagine Lamar Jackson in that offense right now? I'm glad he's with us. Yeah. So then we got tonight Thursday night football. Detroit at Green Bay. Detroit is favored one and a half. I heard Green Bay are getting a few of their guys back, but. I don't know, Jordan Love, this is a prove-it game for Jordan Love. Can he go at home in front of a divisional opponent who is also very, really damn tough and and win? I think the answer is yes. I think the Packers are going to win tonight because I think Jordan Love is the third generational talented quarterback in a row. Um, he's not, okay, I kind of take that back. He's not going to be what Aaron Rodgers and Brett Farber, but He's definitely going to be a solid franchise guy for them and, you know, maybe take them to the playoffs a few times. And I think tonight you see that he, just like Jared Goff is now and was before, can just be a very solid, winnable quarterback in the right system. I think I've seen I've seen Packers wide receivers, not even their starters because they've been injured. Watson's been out, but they've been like open all over the place in every game. And I just I think that scheme is built for Jordan Love's strengths and he just needs to have his guys who he should have tonight. I think he could maybe expose a defense that doesn't have Chauncey Gardner-Johnson anymore. Um, the massive, massive trap game for the Lions. We'll see. Do they actually have grit? I still think the Packers are going to win tonight. Yeah, I'm going to go with Detroit <laughs> after you said all that. I'm going with Detroit. I think I think they're uh, going to bounce back from uh, that. Lo- Didn't they lose last week? No, they killed that one. Twenty twenty six. I'm thinking game. of the game in week two. Um, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I thought they bounced back last week pretty nicely, and I think they're going to continue on that path. And uh, yeah, they know how to win in Green Bay from last year. They did it last yeah. year, so I think they're going to continue to do it. And I'm a believer in Jared Goff. Mm. All right, so Sunday night football, we've got Kansas City at the New York Jets. Kansas City's favored, big time, nine and a half points. I'm going to go ahead and say Kansas City wins, but I think the Jets cover. I do think that it, like, I think a lot of people are thinking it's going to be a blowout. I think the Jets' defense is going to keep them in the game. I'm still not sold that Kansas City has, you know, fully figured out their offensive things that they want. Um, I still don't think they have that same wide receiver talent. 
that they've had in the past. So I'm going to say the Jets' defense keeps it close. I think that you could be right. The Jets' defense could keep it close, but the deciding factor will be the fact that Zach Wilson will not be able to move the ball at all against the Chiefs' defense. He's just not a good quarterback. Are the Chiefs' defense that good? They're above average. They're above average, and Chiefs are, what, 2-1? and one? I mean, look, I think the Chiefs won as well. I agree with you there. I, I think Zach Wilson is a below-average quarterback who's going to look to probably be starting in his last NFL start for a very long time, if ever, um, because he will just look god-awful, and then the Jets will start someone else, and he won't really get another chance. I think they did sign somebody, some veteran. Trevor Simeon. Yeah, that's right. Um, okay, well, then next up, we've got Monday Night Football. It's going to be a good game. Seattle at the Giants. Even spread, so doesn't matter one way or the other. 50-50 shot. That I'm going, you don't think so? Who are you going to go with? Uh, I don't think the Giants will be able to move the ball. Daniel Jones is kind of overrated. Um, I think that John Waters is a good tight end to have. Is Saquon Barkley hurt still? Uh, I'm not sure. That's a good question. That's a very good question. But I think the Giants lose big time. I say that the Giants win. Uh, I'm not going to say it's going to be a big time win, but I think it's going to be a win. Um why? I don't think they I I I believe in the New York Giants coaching staff. That's the main reason. And I think have anything to do with our boy oh, Saquon Lee. returned to practice today and so did their starting guard. So they should be back to full health, it sounds like. Okay. I still think the Seahawks are better. I do I am a Daniel Jones believer. Um and so far Seattle to me has kind of just been meh. Yeah, no, I don't know. They, I, I expected much more from them, and this year they just they, they haven't really. Ran, and they won their next two games. They beat who did they beat? The Panthers and the okay. Lions. They beat the. They did beat the Lions. On the huh. road too. Okay. Um. Yeah, I still don't think they're gonna win. I'm gonna go Giants. West okay. coast to e- West coast to East coast. I'm gonna go Giants. But yeah, that wraps up the AFC North and the prime time event. So, Mike, you want to go ahead and introduce us to your new segment that you're gonna have each week? Yes, guys, I have created a new segment that I want to test out. So, just let me know how you guys feel about it. I am going to do a weekly um, top five Ravens power rankings to show who the five most contributing Ravens to the team have been this season. Um, So let me pull up my list real fast. Okay. Now, remember, this is, this is recent. Okay. So this isn't necessarily like how it's going to end. I'm going to change it after every game. But number five, I have the the um, the backup, our center Sam Mustafer, who's stepped in big time so far in two weeks. Um, I have him a little lower on this list because he has had a couple of mistakes, but I think he's had what like a combined five pressures, and he's not let up a sack or anything. He's been really good, really solid filling in for Tyler Linderbaum, a big reason why we beat the Bengals, um, and that's why I have him at. Number five. At number four, I have Patrick Queen. Um, Last year when Roquan Smith came over, he stepped it up big time. Uh, We kind of were hoping that would happen, and it did. And this offseason, it was kind of up in the air what we were going to do with Patrick Queen. We thought we might trade him. We thought we might pick up his fifth-year option, but we didn't either. He's on his last year of the contract, and he is just here to prove his worth, and he has been proving his worth, and arguably maybe trying to earn a contract here in Baltimore, which would be kind of untraditional, but still could happen. Number three on this list, 
I have to put, obviously, he's going to be pretty high up, uh, Lamar Jackson. I think he's had, the reason he's only at three is because he's had a couple of turnovers that have cost us the game. And, and there are times where he looks shaky, like commanding the line of scrimmage. But he still has been an integral part of our offense. He ran in two touchdowns last week. It's clearly he is a uh, better passer than people have been giving him credit to. And honestly, he's been seeing the field in a more intelligent way, I feel. I still think he gets caught up sometimes and makes stupid mistakes like he has in the past. But he's learning. Um, number two. I have a big breakout game last week, Kyle Hamilton. And I love the fact that he's number two on this list so early into his career because he is just balling out. It seemed like he was all over the ball all of last week, and I think he keeps getting better. I mean, he's going to be in the face of Deshaun Watson. He's going to be right wherever the ball is. You can You can expect that if he has a healthy season, he could be making a push for Defensive Player of the Year. Although, as a safety, he probably won't win it. It'll probably go to one of those edge rushers. Keep an eye out for him. Um, and then number one, I think, is pretty obvious. It's Roquan Smith. Even in a game where he had a down game, in some people's opinions, I still think he had a very strong outing. I re specifically remember that one deflection he had uh, that was really good in, like, the second or third quarter. Um, his football IQ is just – it's the best on the defense he commands that defense and even in a game where we played sloppy he kept us in it till the very end and honestly shouldn't have lost that game and that's kind of where i am so far so every week i'll update this people will move up and down i'll recap it one more time i have five sam mustafer four patrick queen three lamar jackson two kyle hamilton one rope one smith all right the so real question let me know is what you guys Think about that. I want to know in the comments. Yeah, let us know what you think in the lower. comments. Um, the real question is, who are the bottom five? <laughs> uh, I'll give you right off the back without even thinking. Kevin Zeitler, Kevin Seymour. Injury bug. I'm just thinking overall, uh, Rashad no, Bateman. Um, um, Ronnie Stanley. Which isn't really fair. I'm not gonna. I'm okay. not gonna grade him. Kenyon Drake. Kenyon Drake. And without thinking, my last one, Justin Tucker. No, no, I I would probably say Ronald Darby just has been so hit or miss. You know, I was I was trying to make a push over Sam Mustafer to put uh Brandon Stevens as five, but I think Mustafer's done a little more. But Stevens has been phenomenal to this point. Yeah, so also just to mention this, the reason why I say Kayvon, Kayvon Seymour, he let up. He is the reason why we let up two big punt returns this week. He yeah. lost his lane. Uh, he's he's, con he's the he's the gunner, so he's supposed to contain everything and make sure nothing gets outside of him. So that he let one get outside of him, and then on another one, he got washed to the out out of bounds by the um, receiving team's guy that was guarding him, and just got completely washed out of the play. And that opened everything up for the return or two. So twice, both returns were on him. Yeah, that's really annoying. But it our special teams this year has been the worst I've ever seen. The worst, yeah. Like I don't know if Harbaugh needs to take over special teams or what, but it's uh, it's not been good. But anyways, yeah. Um. Anyways, guys, you enjoy this game this weekend. Let's hope for a Ravens win. Let's get to three and one. Let's get the sole ownership of the AFC North again. Um, the Steelers are being pesky as they always are, but if we win this week, I think we're in a very good position to beat them next week um, if we don't lose anyone else. And, yeah, just pray for an injury-free win. Yeah, we've got three straight games. doesn't matter how we do it. On the road. If we keep our players on the field and we win, I don't care how we do it. We've got three straight games on the road. This is the first of the three. So I think it's really important that we get this started off um, the not right way. Mention, not to mention the third one's like, what, 6,000 miles away? Yeah. So either way, you know, we got to get this one started off the right way. Everyone's going to be against us. We are the underdogs. Everyone's going to pick the Bengals to win this game. But we have to, yeah. uh, you know, have that underdog mentality. I know Roquan's been saying it all week. He said 
He knows that they're known for having the dog pound in Cleveland. He said, well, I'm a dog. So here we go. Um, but yeah. But yeah, uh, just go ahead. If you liked us, make sure you shoot us a like, subscribe, follow, make sure uh, turn on your notifications. Anytime we do post a video on YouTube, you'll get that notification. And then again, on Spotify, you can follow us and like our um, audio only on there so that if you can't watch, you can still listen. I just want to tell all of our loyal viewers, all seven of you guys, for now, there are going to be some changes coming to this show structurally as we kind of find our way through. But we feel that we are coming up with a format that will help us spread our news to all of Raven's flock, which we feel will be a good thing. Yep. Well, I, I think we are going to bring a little bit of comedic relief, a little bit of, you know, football yeah. uh, background as well. And I think it's going to be a really good combination. So stay tuned. We're going to, you know, keep getting better and better for you guys. So. Excited to see what we got for in store with for you guys for the rest of the year. Oh, and by the way, to any Cleveland fans who might be watching, if y'all are if y'all are so bitter about losing your team, maybe just for once, maybe just for once in your damn existence, you could win something. Yeah. Because if don't. not, shut the f up. You took our team. The Colts took our team. What did we do? We came back and won two Super Bowls. Yeah. We're we're not the we're not the Baltimore Browns either. We're the Baltimore Ravens. So, yeah, we didn't steal I mean, your name. You guys pressure drafted Johnny Manziel. So, yeah, but hey, I'm glad you guys are making the AFC North a little bit more competitive. But still, yeah, no, seriously, it's, it's good because but still, we love seeing you guys cry every December as you miss the playoffs and we clinch. Um, it's very fun because you guys have this rage of like. They left our city and we should be better than them. But you never are, unless we're injured. And it's like, if we're injured, okay, whatever, you're better than us. But if we're fully healthy, you're never going to be better than us. So just... They tried to screw up the quarterback market for us. I mean... Didn't work. Didn't I hope work. Lamar Jackson throws for 500 yards on these mothers tomorrow, on these fools. Seriously, this weekend. Um, I hope all of the coaching that they've been praising gets booed i hope that the browns get booed out of their own stadium i hope that that r word throws seven interceptions and goes home crying and that note, honestly i have no love for the browns i might hate the Bengals the most but the browns are one of the they're the they're the cowboys of the afc but without the reputation of winning but uh anyways like i said <laughs> make sure you guys hit us up with a like and subscribe That'll uh, be it for this week's preview yeah, versus the Cleveland Browns. We will <laughs> be back um, probably Monday for the recap video. And, uh, you know, go Ravens. Go O's. Go Ravens. Go O's. Let's clinch this division. Yes, sir. Big divisional weekend for the city of Baltimore.